Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared, and today we're checking out a couple new Kubis I got in. Now, this one, I recently tried the larger version in premium materials with a titanium frame lock. This one still has premium steel, but it's a lot more affordable. So, this one's an M390 G10 scale steel liners with a titanium milled pocket clip. It has nice big hardware, but it's also smaller. So, the other one... You know, it was great. An awesome knife. I liked it a lot. However, the proportions felt off. This one feels so much more appropriate. The blade to handle ratio and, you know, just the way it feels and looks is significantly better in my in my opinion. Um, now, they also have another version that's even more affordable with still premium steel with S30V. So you have the opportunity to get this in multiple different options depending on what your budget is. And S30V is still a premium steel. So it, that's that's a, that's awesome, you know. Um, M390 though is a, a is a little bit more premium, um, especially if it's heat treated properly. Now that's a whole nother story that we're not going to get into. But the knife itself, the detent, super good. Great detent. The hole lands in a great position, whether you're thumb or reverse flicking it. Both of them are equally as good. And that's not always the case with hole deployments. This one's very easy with, you know, either one. And the detent, when you unlock it, the lock bar, great access to the lock bar. The detent is nice and early. Easily get past and it is super, super smooth. Now, I have not oiled it. It has not broken in. It's fresh out of the box. Oh, and it comes in a premium package, like their premium knives. So you have the sleeve, the, the knife wipe, and all the good stuff in there. The Ergos, super, super comfortable. I don't feel the clip at all. It's, you know, that's kind of the beauty with a, a titanium milled pocket clip, especially when they do this chamfer right here at the end where they put the screw. It makes it to where instead of this being a corner where your finger or where your your hand pokes into it right there where it pokes into your hand. It Your hand lays right over the top of it, nice and comfortably, really good. Um, The clip, I haven't tried it yet, so I'm guessing it's just fine. No shift, no, rock solid. It must be in set to some extent. The detent, man, is so good on this. Even the flipper tab, as soon as you break that detent, it flies. You're never going to fail this. Great, great detent. Now, the blade shape. The blade shape, I like this one better than the other one, which is the same blade shape. It's just the other one's longer and more extended. This one just feels more appropriate. It's a great blade shape for EDC. Great utility. Ooh, just poke my mat. Great utility cuts. You have belly there for slicing. You can get push cuts done. The choil's not the largest. That's one complaint. Um, it's fine. You know, you can use it, you know, in a pinch. Or you can cover it up with your hand if you're going to do push cuts. But it's not really made for a finger. It is a little small, so it's more of just a sharpening choil. So, you know, I don't know if they should have made it smaller and just gave us more cutting length or made it bigger and gave us a full choil. Either way, I st I'm still fine with it. It's okay. Um, lock up. Rock solid. Detent lash. No detent lash. This is a beautiful example. It's um, very well done, and the action's really good on it. Lots of milling on the inside. Lock up. Rock solid. Yeah, I'm liking it. So let's check out the next one. Now, this next one is a Manganis design. Sharif Manganis. I've uh, tried a lot of... Er, I tried to get all of his designs in, but I have tried a few of his designs. And this one is amazing. I am very happy with this. People were telling me I need to try this, and they were right. This is such a good knife. So, the way the handle, pivot, and blade are positioned makes it to where the blade has a lot of weight in this direction. So, once you break the detent... This thing flies. The front flipper is a perfect example of a front flipper. The jimping is exactly the way 
I say jimping should be on a front flipper. It goes up all the way up to the top and around the top of the front flipper and it's nice and grippy without being sharp. Super easy to use. You could do all the little tricks with it. Even somebody who is not good at front flippers will be just fine with this one. Access to the lock bar is really good. Detent is super early, so you're never going to fumble around on the detent. I mean, it's very early, so it's easy to get past, and it is super smooth. Has not broken. I have not oiled it or anything. So, fresh out of the box, this thing is redunculously smooth. But because of the position of the pivot with the blade, all the weight is on this side. So, it makes it easier to for, for it to be smoother, I guess. The thumb studs, great placement. They're not very proud of the scales. They might even be the same height, but the positioning and everything is very easy to get to. No problems accessing the, the thumb studs. And the detent is perfect for these deployments. Reverse flick, same thing. It lands right in a perfect spot for you to easily reverse flick it. It's very fidgety. <laughs> it, it's fun to, to, to deploy. Now, the ergos are hand melting. I love the shape, the design features, and ergos just all mixed together. So, the blade is somewhat of a harpoon blade, but if you notice, it canters down a little bit. Now, the handle does the same thing in this direction. So, say in a reverse grip, if I'm gonna cut a strap, the blade is facing towards me. So when I cut a strap, the, the rope is not going to slip up and around the, the edge. It's going to get caught, and it's gonna give me the ability to cut straps a lot easier. Now, with push cuts or cutting forward, same thing. The blade is facing towards what I'm cutting. Even with utility cuts, same thing. The, the, the blade tip and everything is facing towards what I'm cutting. It makes it so much easier to trap materials and cut materials without issues. It's a thing where something can look so simple, but because of little design attributes, the little things they do in the knife for its design makes it. And this would be, I would love to see this in a premium version. This is amazing. This is a great, great knife. Great tool. And action, fit, finish, everything is phenomenal on it. The hardware is all T8 hardware. It might be a T10 pivot, but it's all large hardware. The clip is great. Um, it is reversible. Now, the stop pin. The stop pin doesn't land in my favorite position. It lands right down here, but it's not tucked right behind the edge. So it still gives you plenty of life to sharpen off the edge. There's no real problems with it, but it makes it to where you can't Cut in your own choil in the future, and if you do, you have to be very careful not to take the steel from where the stop pin lands. In the opening position, it's the, the flipper tab that hits right there. Very easy to slow roll out even with the, the front flipper because of the height of it. It's just got that, that great height and great jimping. It just grips you back, but I never felt it. It doesn't... Because of the way, like I said, again, the way the shape goes, you can even hold it up high and it's not going to pinch you. I haven't been pinched by it. Um, I have to be all the way up here just to get hit, but it still goes right past me without an issue. So you're not going to be holding it up too high to flick it or anything like that. That's great. Like I said, man, I'd love to see this in a premium version. Now, the one downside, which it's not that big of a deal, because the price point is great, but D2 steel. Now, they're starting to use 14C28N, which I recently uh, showed this knife. This one's in 14C28N, great knife. Um, Kubi's killing it, man. Kubi's killing it, not only with the, the way they're doing it, but their designs have been really good, their price point's been really good, and they've just knocked everything out of the park, fit, finish, and uh, action-wise. Their action is insane. A uh, very premium action on their budget knives. Now, they're using 14C, which, you know, is not that much more than D2. So, 
Uh, in my opinion, I think they should just stick with 14C. It is an actual stainless, holds a really good edge. It's a phenomenal steel. I love 14C. It's a Sandvik steel. Um, D2, however, is almost a stainless, but not quite a stainless. Now, it does have the coating on it, so we're not going to have to worry about corrosion too much. And they did stonewash the coating, so it's not going to just scratch looking at it, you know, which is good. But I still would prefer the 14C. However, D2 is still a fine steel for this price. I'm not bitching about the price point for this steel or the steel for this price point. It's fine. But, you know, I think it would be even better if it was in 14C. But they knocked it out of the park with both of these. Now, I'm going to link everything down in the description for you guys. This was just a quick first impressions. I love you guys. Peace.